Today we're at the modern to try to combo off with a bunch of ley lines, some mana dorks, and freed from the real. So we got a sweet one this week. We are heading to Modern to play Bant Leylines Freed from the Real combo. And this deck is kind of ridiculous. So we're built around Leyline of the Guild Pack, Leyline of Abundance. Leyline of the Guild Pack honestly mostly just adds four green mana symbols to the battlefield, which is actually really important to our deck. Leyline of Abundance, this is our main combo Leyline. If we tap a creature for mana, we get an extra green mana, and then we can pay eight to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature we control. So what are we doing with these cards? Well, first, they work really well with Nykthos. So we can make a bunch of mana with Nykthos, although honestly, making a bunch of Nykthos mana is kind of our backup plan. Our main plan is to go infinite with Leyline of Abundance, a mana dork like Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch, Saint Weaver, Dryad Arbor, and Freed from the Real. So Freed from the Real, one of the sweetest, most unique auras in all of Magic. It enchants a creature, and once I creatures enchanted we can pay a blue mana to either tap or untap it so the idea of our combo leyline of abundance lets our mana dorks tap for at least two mana so let's say we have leyline of abundance birds of paradise and we put a freed from the real on it we can tap our birds of paradise for a blue mana we'll get a bonus green mana from leyline of abundance so we make two mana for tapping it we can spend the blue for freed for the real to untap birds of paradise and then do it again and again and again make infinite mana and use that mana to win the game same with noble hierarch same as birds of paradise sanctum weaver in some ways is our best combo piece because we don't even need Leyline of Abundance since it taps for mana equal to the number of enchantments we control and it is an enchantment. If we put a Freed from the Real on it, it just taps for at least two, one taps for one, infinite mana of all colors. And then Dryad Arbor is probably our worst, but also our sneakiest combo piece. It's only a one of, we can grab it with a fetch land. The problem with Dryad Arbor is to go infinite, we need Leyline of the Guild Pact and Leyline of Abundance because Dryad Arbor only taps for green mana. We need blue to untap with freed from the real but if we have ley line of the guild pact then dryad arbor can tap for blue and then we can go infinite with it so once we go infinite how do we win the game and the answer mostly is ley line of abundance that's part of the power of that ley line is not only is it a combo piece it's a combo finisher so once we make infinite mana we just put infinite plus one plus one counters on our team attack and win the game and the best part of this deck is with our nut draw we just literally win the game on turn two if we go turn zero ley line of abundance turn one birds of paradise turn two put freed from the real on it we just make infinite mana and an infinitely big birds of paradise and kill her opponent with a single 20 plus power birds of paradise attack otherwise storm the festival works really well with like the ley line nick those plan we can get up to six mana really quickly it's not really a finisher but it is really good at digging through it x to find our combo pieces once we go infinite we can flash it back cast it twice kind just lets us go infinite in every way infinite life infinite card draw we can make our opponent draw infinite if we want to to mill them out and then Emrakul, once we make infinite mana, ping 15, not a big deal. And the upside to Emrakul is we don't even let our opponent untap. Since we get an extra turn, we just Emrakul, maybe on like turn two, and then annihilate our opponent and win the game. Otherwise, the biggest downside of our combo is it does scoop to creature removal. Like all our opponent has to do to stop this is just keep killing our mana dorks. So we have Pact of Indiation and Veil of Summer to hopefully protect our mana dorks, fight through counter spells, fight through removal spells. Mana base, we talked about the interesting stuff. In the side, board we got even more ley lines ley line of the void for graveyard decks ley line of sanctity for thought seizes discard effects terra sunderfers for removal surge of salvation more protection stony silence for artifact decks and that is bant ley lines freed from the real combo that's our deck for today so let's jump into a modern league and see if we can go infinite with ley lines and freed from the real in modern thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy the gameplay and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish we've got new tokens and play mats and you can even get the token signed if you want check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com all right it is modern time we are playing this absolutely wild bant ley lines deck and sans got nothing <laughs> we are going to mulligan this hand, ooh, is this a land away from a turn two kill? So we have turn one birds. We have the ley line on turn zero. We have freed from the real. Yeah, we are, we're a man away from, well, not guaranteed turn two win, but likely turn, well, potential turn two win. We get to storm the festival. Essentially, we make infinite mana on turn two if our opponent can't disrupt us. And then we have the, at least the storm the festival to find something to finish the game. 
Opponent, Pendlehaven and Springleaf Drum. Opponent passes. That is a land. Well, Breeding Pool, untapped. And Bird's Paradise, go. Well, let's hope our opponent taps out and does not have removal. Urza Saga, that's fine. And Patchy, okay. Oh, oh, tapping out. Oh, <gasps> Zabaz, okay, we're good to go. We are good to go. This might be the turn to kill. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's do this properly. So we gotta have a blue left over for the freed from the real. Yeah, let's just do it this way. We can just play the forest, tap the birds for blue greed. We need blue left over, so blue. Free from the real on the birds. And it's party time, so untap the birds for one, tap the birds for two. <laughs> untap and tap and then tap it and then untap it. <laughs> We can do this all day. Thankfully, we only have to do it till we get to six mana for now and we can storm the festival. I mean, we're guaranteed to storm the festival twice. So what do we need to win? Kenrith is an auto win. That'd be the best. Mostly Kenrith, really. Untap the birds. Storm the festival. And we find, oh my God, that's Kenrith. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it does not get much better than this. So now we also have the Kenrith. I mean, actually, so the issue we have now, the, we, uh, opponent scoops it up. So the issue we had before, right, is our opponent could block with the Zabas. We can make our bird infinitely big, but they could just chump block with the Kenrith on the battlefield. Then we're then we're good. We make everything infinitely big and haste them up. Well, Stony's <laughs> that went way better than I thought. Stony Silence in, tear us under in. What are we going down? Uh, probably Pact of Negations. Actually, Veil of Summer is even worse. So Veil of Summer and then a Pact and and maybe two packs run out like that that turn two kill <laughs> turn two kill with ley lines <laughs> ley line of the guild pack yes it leads to some annoying decks like people play you know sign a draco and i've seen that before but it also leads to some really weird <laughs> interesting shenanigans in this deck ley line is mostly just to add mana for nykthos making our creatures all colors doesn't really do anything i guess it does like fix our mana a bit but it's mostly Mostly just free for for free free for for free green pips <laughs> for the nick those well on the game too let's just do that again now our opponent knows what's up which might make it a little bit trickier like all they really had to do is kill the birds yeah no ley lines no keep oh god no lands no keep well we're at five so i think we might be keeping Emrakul to the bottom. One of the mana dorks, I guess the noblest of hierarchs? Okay, so we need a ley line, I guess. Ley line of abundance before we die. Oh, wow, that's a pretty good draw. I mean, it's annoying that it wasn't in our open hand for free, but now we're actually pretty close to comboing. Again, Bona Ink Moth Nexus. Sanctum Weaver Ley Line combo, even easier. Because Sanctum Weaver taps for a bunch of mana. Sanctum Weaver is cool because it can combo without Ley Line, which is a nice little, nice little upside. Well, all right, there goes our birds. Picking our poisons and Zabaz returns with a bonus counter. Stony Silence. Well, step one. Sanctum Weaver, go. When am I drawing another land? The issue we have here, so we can theoretically, well, if we draw a blue source, if we draw a blue source, we can theoretically make an infinitely big Sanctum Weaver, but our opponent can't block it. Urza Saga, sure. We might just have to Stony, ooh, Ravager. All right, well, odds of Stony Silence increasing. Opponent gonna get in for two. Stony Silence at least stops Ravager from popping off. Well, all right, opponent passes. Blue source would still be good. Another freed from the rail. Oh, yeah, I think we just stony silence. This also gives us a second blue source next turn because now we have two enchantments, assuming that a uh, Sanctum Weaver lives. Opponent's trying to think if they want to sack anything. Probably not. I mean, actually, maybe. It might be worth just sacking the Ravager, honestly. Go all in on the 4-4 four, four flyer, 5-5 five, five flyer, whatever it would be. Opponent lets it go. Urza Saga. What did they get off this saga? Anything that's a problem. Shadow Sphere. We saw Soul Guide or Soul Guide Lantern. Spring Leaf Drum. We saw Spring Leaf Drum. All right, there's Apache and hit us for four. Uh, so we can't win because they can block with Apache. I guess we'd like to draw a finisher. We can go infinite. 
and make a big blocker. Leyline of the Guild Pact. That doesn't actually change much. I mean, we'll probably still play it, but all right. Tap our mana. Play the Freed from the Real. Do the thing. So now untap for one, tap for three. So now we have infinite mana of any combination of colors because we can tap for three blue, untap for one. So we just like float a bunch of blue and then we make other colors. So we can run out our hand, <laughs> but our hand is just more ley lines. <laughs> tap, untap. Tap, untap. Yeah, we're in that weird scenario where we have infinite mana. We can make an infinitely large creature, but we can't actually win the game. <laughs> I mean, now we make even more mana with a ley line. So I guess we just like play the ley line of the guild pact and then add some counters to the sanctum weaver and then pass. A little anticlimactic. <laughs> Oh, uh, infinite mana. All of our stuff is all colors. We have a stony silence, infinite plus one plus one counters, and I think we're about to pass the turn. There's no reason to play another freed from the real. And we can combo off more instant speed. There's not really a need to like do this forever now. Although we can't, hmm, we can't really attack with it, can we? I mean, attacking would just eat the patchy anyway, but yeah, I think we have to not attack this turn. Well, we'll add a few more counters. Just a little more, just a little more. <laughs> We're almost done, opponent, we promise. <laughs> you could have just not played a blocker and we would have just killed you, but we would really like a finisher. Storm the Festival, Emerkel, any of that stuff would be spectacular. Spectacular. Like I said, we're not gonna attack this turn anyway. We're gonna leave up the ability to combo more during our opponent's turn. I mean, we could still lose. All right, they get to Urza's Saga. Our opponent can just keep attacking with the Flyer, eventually block with the Ravager to make the Flyer even bigger. Oh, Pithing Needle, that's actually, that locks down the combo. Oh, that's so funny. So Pithing Needle doesn't stop mana abilities. So we can't stop Sanctum Weaver, but if you name Freed from the Real, you, the ability to untap is on Freed from the Real, not on the Sanctum Weaver. So it does stop it from untapping. Finisher? I think we still have enough mana, right? Because we have this Nykthos. So we can Storm the Festival. What answers do we have to Pithing Needle? 12 mana with two lands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just ley line things. Uh, Storm the festival? Ooh, Teferi. Teferi's pretty good. Teferi can balance the pithy needle. I guess we'll just take more Nykthosis. Uh, keep the untapped Nykthos. Bounce a pithy needle. So now we go, ooh, oh, it's Kenrith. Oh, that's game. That's game. That's what we needed. Make a bit of mana. Untap, tap, run out the Kenrith, and this should this should get the concession. Cause now our creatures are infinitely big and they're hasty and they're trampling. So now we just add a bunch of counters and, uh, and smack ya. Oh, ley lines, ley lines, lay an opponent, scoops it up. And that was pretty spectacular. Wow, we got a true two kill. We got a true two kill with ley lines. <laughs> We got the wrong ley line, but ley line of the guild pack is still good, especially if you find Nykthos. We get to lead on a Birds of Paradise. So we need a, we still need a couple things. Nykthos is actually our best draw, I think, commercial district for our opponent. Nykthos is our best draw. Noble Hierarch's fine. Play Noble Hierarch, play Breeding Pool. We're not gonna attack. We're just gonna leave up this Veil of Summer, just in case we can get some value out of it. Uh, opponent. Bloodstained Meyer cracks it. Sakura Tribe Elder. All right. Nick those. Ugh. All the pact and negations in the West. Uh, not a great draw. Well, again, with the Birds of Paradise for one. We can't even pay for a pact at the moment, which is kind of awkward. Kind of awkward, opponent. Forest. Dry to the Ilsen Grove. Stomping Grounds. Scalding Tarn. Farseek. Not looking great. We really need the Nykthos now-ish. Like, right now. Off the top. Oh, these double packed negations, opponent. Passes. Nykthos. Nykthos. Sanctum Weaver. Well, I mean, we're gonna play the Sanctum Weaver on the off chance that we survive another turn. I think odds are probably in favor of us dying. If we have to pact a Primeval Titan, that's pretty bad. But if they have Primeval Titan, we have to do it. It just means we have to skip next turn. Another Dryad. If they have Valica, okay, Mountain. Scape Shift, well, I mean, we have to pack that to stay alive. This does cost us our turn. 
Opponent passes. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Pay for the pact. Draw a forest. Get in for one. I mean, if we can get one turn, we have a shot. We need one turn, we need no Valica, and then we can storm the festival and try to find the freed from the real. The one ring. I don't think we can pack that, although that does make winning trickier. Far seek, okay. Well, this might be our turn where we get to try to storm the festival. Opponent, combat, hits us. Well, this is this is a big, big turn. Down to 16, we draw a Teferi. One, two, three. This is the game, uh, storm the festival. That's not exactly what we were looking for, but we can take a ley line of abundance. Kenrith, pass the turn. One ring, down to 13. Oh, they get to draw two more cards though. The one ring's so good. Opponent's up to four cards. Oh, we really wanted that freed from the real. Cracks a scalding tarn. I mean, if we get to untap here, the fact that they're surveil landing now is maybe encouraging. Another one ring. Okay, we're not gonna counter that. I mean, if we can go infinite, we can win on our opponent's upkeep. Draws with the one ring bolts the sanctum weaver can't really do anything about it and another dryad passes we need a big draw misty rainforest we can't even storm we only have eight mana now play to fairy play a misty rainforest crack the misty rainforest to thin the deck dryad arbor to fairy bounce a dryad play a hierarch and pass the turn. Well, we'll get in with the Kenrith. Actually, do we? You know what? We're gonna stay on defense. Pass the turn. All right, can we fade one more time? Opponent, down to 11. Draws two more cards. Five cards in hand. If they wish for Valica, that's awkward. They're probably wishing for Scapeshift, though, I think. All right, pack to negation. Staying alive, just barely. This does mean we have to spend a lot of mana on the pact going to bolt the bird. Opponent's got a pass. Well, we will put a counter on Kenrith. One, two, three, four, five. Pay for the silly pact. We really need a freed from the real. So pay for the pact. The issue is now we are out of, we are out of defense and our opponent still has this one ring. Play a hierarch. Yeah, I think this is where we die. Pass the turn. This Veil of Summer has just done nothing. Draws three cards. Maybe we should have been attacking with Kenris rather than defending Teferi. And there's another one. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> the one ring. It's a magic card. Uh, Surge of Salvation comes in. And I guess a Terra Sunder. And run it like that. Oh, we were close. We were so close. The storm, the festival didn't find, we couldn't find the freed from the real. And then our opponent, I mean, the one ring really did it, but our opponent was able to just draw so many bolts that, uh, that we couldn't really, couldn't really keep up. They managed to keep us from flashing back the storm, the festival just by chaining those bolts together. I feel like this shouldn't be that tough of well i don't know our opponent shouldn't have that much interaction we also don't have that much interaction we can kill faster than our opponent we just need the right draw this is another one of those hands that really wants a freed from the real by any means necessary uh forest and bird's paradise go come on pay off that's cheaper than emrakul <laughs> emrakul's great it's just a bunch of mana away opponent bloodstained mire crack really got the bolt you got the bolt in hand opponent Always with the lightning bolt. Wait, we took out the veil. Why is there a veil of summer? We took all them out because they're horrible. We will take a hollowed fountain, untapped. Play a sanctum weaver. Go. Yeah, I don't know why this is in our deck. Opponent cracks. Gets a forest. Sakura tribe elder. Getting the ramp out. Nykthos. Well, play the windswept teeth and pass the turn. Yeah, we're still a minute away from Emrakul. That's for sure. Opponent cracks. Grabs a mountain. Galding Tarn cracks it. Mountain. And a one ring. 
All right, well, that's not good. Windswept Heath for a Dryad Arbor. Freed from the real, freed from the real, Besaju. Would be good if it wasn't for the one ring. Uh, Well, play a Nykthos, and once again we pass, and now our opponent gets to do one ring things, which is probably gonna be pretty bad for us. Yeah, we just haven't been able to find the freed from the real these games. Passes, come on deck, come on deck. Well, that's a storm the festival. That's better than nothing. Play Besaju. Tap this. Storm the festival. Freed from the real. Freed from the real. One on you. One on you. Untap. And tap for blue. Untap. Oh, I think we got it. Tap for blue. Wow. Untap. Tap for blue. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. I mean, we can just make our creatures infinitely big. We also have the Emrakul in hand. Oh, okay, that's that's what we're trying to do. Life is easier once we find the freed from the reels. Oh, I messed up. Okay, so Veil of Summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oops. <laughs> I'm glad we won that because we were trying to take out the Veil of Summers and we took out the Pact Negations instead. Veil of Summer just does not do anything in this matchup. Like, it, it's just a dead card. Pact Negation that we saw it in game one, it did keep us alive. It didn't let us win, but it did keep us alive for a bit. Okay, that was a, that was a good combo kill. Still not as fast and clean as we're hoping, but... This hand has literally everything of our dreams, except for lands. We have, like, the full combo. Double Nykthos is kind of awkward. Are we putting the pack to the bottom, I guess? Or do we put the second Nykthos? We don't have enough mana symbols. Yeah, we'll put a Nykthos to the bottom for now. All right. Well, start with the ley line. Valica. Oh, boy. Well, we know they have it this game. Misty Rainforest. Yeah, let's Misty for Breeding Pool. Play the Hierarch. This Besaju could have some value for getting rid of a Valakut at some point. I mean, now we're seeing the power that the power of the deck here is if we just have free from the real, we just go infinite on turn two. Like it's it's absurd. The ceiling is incredibly high. The floor is you kill all of our mana dorks and cry, but the ceiling of this deck is really high. Dwarven mine, opponent passes. Nykthos, get in for one. Pass the turn. We're still a mana short of Storm the Festival opponent. I mean, if they play a Dryad, we can tear asunder it. Gets the Stomping Grounds. World Souls Rage. So kills the Hierarch and gets a land. We drop down to no meaningful amount of mana. We draw <laughs> Leyline of the Guild Pack. Not looking great here. Well, we'll pass the turn. Yeah, we can't Pact without dying. There's the Dryad. Pick your cheese up. All right. Our opponents had uh, the answers this game. Storm the Festival, not gonna ever cast that. Seems like a one ring. Yeah, and a one ring. Ah. Well, game two was sweet. This game, you can see the downside, right? Oh, and they got Commercial District, okay. Valakut not on yet? Oh, they need one more and they double Valakut, all right. Yeah, we just don't really have a way to rebuild from here. To Fairy, can't cast it and dead. Well, game two was really sweet. Ah, this deck. <laughs> so explosive, yet so inconsistent. So we have Leyline of the Guild Pack, and we have the Nykthos. Double Sanctum Weaver. So we can't go infinite, we don't really have a payoff, but we do have a lot of mana. This hand could really use a Storm the Festival. Storm the Festival would be so, so incredibly helpful. Urborg. All right, so probably Coffers. I don't even know. Probably a Sanctum Weaver. Pact Negation. It's good at combo killing, and that's about it. Well, crack the land. Grab a Hollowed Fountain. I think the weakest part of this deck, and I might try changing some of it, I think the mana base might be the weakest part. It's a little weird. There's not that many fetch lands. There's a lot of basic forests, which I guess are good if we have Leyline of the Guild Pack because they tap for everything. But the other card I'm intrigued by, so I'm in interested maybe in Surveil lands. I don't know if they're too slow, but it would help us find stuff. All right, do the Voidwalker, sure. Dryad Arbor is intriguing. Dryad Arbor can actually go infinite if we have Leyline of the Guild Pact and Leyline of Abundance. So we need both Leylines. It could also block a Ragavan. About it, getting in for three with the Void Waka. So we really just need a payoff. We got all the mana. Storm the Festival is the best, even though it is gonna be a one shot because of this Void Walker, but that would be our best top deck probably. Nykthos number two. 
Well, Lango. About it. I mean, I don't think we're countering, like, anything unless we're about to die. <laughs> Packed in negation, it's so painful to counter. Like, could we counter the Bowmaster technically? But then we gotta like time walk ourselves to do it. Does not seem worth it. Plus, we might need this to protect a creature at some point. Coffers does have a decent amount of removal. Liliana. Yeah, I gotta let it go. The problem, we could counter Liliana to protect the Sanctum Weaver, but then if they fatal push the Sanctum Weaver, we can't pay. <laughs> we can't pay for the pact and we die. Opponent beats us down to 10. Oh, it still works. Okay. I thought we couldn't storm the festival, but I think we can because of the ley line. Adding, uh, adding all those green mana symbols. So that's legend roll. Make some more green mana. I guess it's like Birds of Paradise to Fairy. Is that even good? To Fairy is like very awkward on this board because of the Bowmaster. If we get Birds to Fairy, I mean, I think we have to. But then I don't know what we do with this to Fairy. I guess just tick it up. If we take down to bounce something, they just snipe the birds and then grow the the army and kill the to Fairy. And we're at ten. We're actually kind of close to dying ourselves here, honestly. We will discard the forest. Are they killing Teferi? <laughs> no, Pono doesn't even care. Well, we need the greatest draw of all time. I don't even know what it would be. Actually, is there even a draw that matters? I guess it's another Storm the Festival. Ugh, Shieldred too? Yep. <laughs> okay. That is another Storm the Festival. I don't think there's anything better we could draw than that, but I'm not actually sure it's enough. Actually, if we can... Oh, uh, if we hit l green ley line freed from the real, but no, there's a void walker. That's a pile of ley lines. Yeah, we're still just dead. All right, all right, all right. GG coffers. Um, well, surge of salvation seems pretty excellent. Probably some ley lines of sanctity if we can find room. Pact and negation goes out, and then like Teferi doesn't seem that great. I could see Terra Sunder. So I'm worried about Pithing Needle, basically. Pithing Needle's a semi-popular sideboard card, and if we're gonna take out to fairies, we do need a way to deal with Pithing Needle, because Pithing Needle on Freed from the Real does kind of ruin our day. Plus, Terra Sunder can like snipe a shield rid or something in a pinch. Uh, this is a risky hand. We really need to fade our turn one removal spell. Once we untap, we're kinda in great shape, because we have so many ley lines. Man, could you imagine Nykthos? Nykthos would make eight just from these ley lines. Well, player one land. No black. Go. Please, mono black removal heavy deck. Don't kill it. If you let us adapt with it, then we can Veil of Summer. Oh, our opponent did Mulligan. Maybe they don't have it. Okay. Wow, that's actually pretty sweet. And a Terra Sunder. Tap the Noblest of High Arc for three. And Sanctum Weaver. And go. Veil of Summer at the ready. We might snipe that. We could just get that with Terrace under next turn. If we don't draw anything, ooh, grief. This is where Veil of Summer is going to shine. Ooh, draw another one. Yeah, against Mono Black, Veil of Summer has gotta be, gotta be one of our best cards. Would you like to, wow, well, you're gonna scam anyway? All right. Well, I mean, I, I'm kinda okay with this. Double grief when you don't get Thought Seeds is not the end of the world. It's a lot of cards and effort to build a three, four, whatever, or four, three. Wow, do we just, Jeez, double ley lines, wild. Tap a Sanctum Weaver, storm the festival. Ley line is Sanctity, more Sanctum Weavers. Look at those ley lines. I think we just sniped the, the Urza Saga. So it's going pretty well so far. <laughs> Not a bad turn for past the turn. One land, we're doing all this with a single land. The power of mana dorks and ley lines. Opponent, gonna grief us for four, sure. I mean, opponent technically has one land too, although he did kill one. That is a good swamp. Orcish Bowmaster. Uh, well, I guess we bail the summer. In response, more hierarchs. I mean, we can fire off the Storm of the Festival again. So freed from the real, we go infinite. We still need a finisher fin. Well, no, we have the ley line. So, well, we couldn't win this turn with it though, because our opponent can chump block. Well, let's see. We'll grab a forest. Storm the Festival. Still would like Freed from the Real. But this looks like last time. Mana Dork and a Ley Line. Well, we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Let's play the Hierarch. Play the Hierarch. <laughs> Counter on everything. 
I mean, maybe we could do this fairly. We are tabbing for a lot of mana. Like these Sanctum Weavers are making so much mana. Maybe we can just put enough counters on things to, <laughs> to beat our opponent down. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize this deck could win without going infinite or like something functionally like infinite at least. This is, all right, Voidwalker. This is fair mode, Bird's Paradise. Well, join the party. You know what would be sweet is a Nykthos would actually be sweet. That would add a lot of count, a lot of counters. We are on a, uh, a unblockable clock now too with this Voidwalker. We can block the Grief, but... Yeah, Voidwalker, so we have like, we don't have that long to win this game. Can't really deal with the Voidwalker. Opponent, Marsh Flats. Well, let's make a bunch of mana and add a bunch of counters. Tap, 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 and also tap. How many counters do we get? Three? 24 mana to put three plus one, there's so much. There's so much easier ways to put three plus one plus one counters on your team, or cheaper ways at least. Probably easier too, honestly, but you gotta do what you gotta do. We're piecing it together. We are piecing it together. Grow the dorks, grow the dorks. Another hierarch. Mana dorks for literal days. So I think, that's all four hierarchs. I think our plan for winning is this Birds of Paradise. We're on the Birds of Paradise exalted five color ley line bird beat down plan. <laughs> all right, four exalted triggers. I mean, two turn clock and we're dead. So we got to win next turn. We might be able to if our opponent doesn't find a removal. We have to make sure we don't die on the back swing. I think this is fine. So we hit our opponent for seven. Next turn, the bird should be lethal as long as it's alive. Another Bowmaster, that does not change the math. They're gonna go after the Hierarch, but we can add a counter. I mean, we're gonna have to do this eventually anyway. The reason we don't just go all in on adding counters during our turn is we do need to block this turn. And this uh, Grief has Menace, so we do have to be able to block the Grief. And there's a Mishra's Factory. So this way, worst case, we can block and add a bunch of counters. Our opponent, hilariously, they might need to attack aggressively here. Well, actually, I guess it's not gonna matter. Our team's just gonna be too big. They need to get some stuff off our battlefield. They might as well, you know, all right, opponent gets in for three. Unless they're drawing removal, I think we might have it. Opponent passes, end of turn, to have them all. Counter them up, counter them up. I think we have a lethal Birds of Paradise. Magic like Garfield intended. <laughs> Another ley line. <laughs> what a ridiculous board state. <laughs> Five ley lines, four noble high arcs, two sanctum weavers, and the Birds of Paradise attacking for lethal. <laughs> Uh, get in there. Well, I mean, do you have removal opponent? All we gotta do is add a few more counters and uh, that should be the game. Wow, two, two shot Birds of Paradise attack. <laughs> Birds of Paradise for 20. I mean, I guess we just run it back. I don't think we really change anything. I mean, I, maybe the Terra Sunder, do we even? Leyline of Sanctity does seem really good. Yeah, let's go one more Terra Sunder. Well, let's do that one more time. Or even fast, let's not do that actually. Let's combo this time. That was hard mode. That was the, <laughs> fairly, as fair as this deck is, but fairly beat down with Birds of Paradise plan. Not plan A or plan B. That's like pretty far down the, ooh. Well, I mean, we're gonna keep this. We got both of our ley lines. We do not have Freed from the Real, but we can ramp into Storm of the Festival pretty quickly. Uh, we will start with two ley lines in play. We also have the Nykthos this hand. So we have a ungodly amount of mana. Actually, if our if our birds lives, oh, it's a rack deck, interesting. Oh, I was thinking it was coffers, but it's the rack. I mean, if our bird lives, do we just get to storm the festival turn two? One, two, I think we do. Voidwalker, sure. Well, uh, Nykthos. This looks like turn two storm the festival. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Not the best storm the festival, especially since it's a one shot because of this void walker. Although Leyline of Sanctity is very good. Now that we know they're a rack deck, they gotta have a lot of discard. So Leyline of Sanctity is good. We can run out the Sanctum Weaver. Yeah, a little worse with the void walker on the battlefield, but we have another one in hand. Bonnet Urza Saga. So Freed from the Real is sweet. Actually just 
game ending if our opponent doesn't have removal kenrith would be interesting they can cast the storm the festival i guess i don't know how good it is in their deck but they do have we saw bow masters we see the rack they probably have enough all right opponent yeah they're gonna do it they're gonna scam the void walker to cast our storm the festival oh, what's the worst that could happen liliana no liliana doesn't really matter i don't know what i'm scared of here shieldred maybe bowmast is bowmasters i guess bowmaster sniping birds slows us down but not even that much because we have nick those i'm not i'm really not sure this deck can definitely make some mana double bowmaster all right well oh that means they kill sanctum weaver yeah it is kind of annoying one two three four because of nick those we're still kind of good to to do things i think I'm gonna rack us i think we'd rather storm the festival though honestly given the choice <clears throat> we're just gonna storm off here uh storm the festival oh there's freed from the real but we don't have a finisher I mean, we take it though, right? So we actually, no, wait, what am I saying? We just win if they don't have removal because we have the ley line. We don't need a finisher. <laughs> With ley line of abundance, all we need to finish the game is a very uh, clicky finger <laughs> in about 20 minutes of our life. <laughs> But it is a win. It is a win. Tab on tap, tab on tap, tab on tap. Hopefully our opponent scoops once we had the first counter. Late line of abundance. Counter. Do it again. And that was a pretty explosive game. Wow. Opponent scoops it up and that's how you can come up with late lines, I guess. <laughs> this deck's ridiculous, but uh sweet. I should say, so we finished uh we finished early two in. Wow, that's a a lot of packed negations and a, not enough combo pieces. I should say we finished our first league. This is better. Packed a negation going bottom. We finished our first league uh, two and three. I made a couple of very slight changes to the deck. Mostly we had way too many forests and not enough fetch lands. So I added a couple more fetches. Took out a couple forests and added a sneaky, sneaky dryad arbor. Nick those into the storm of the festival and do cool things and win. What do you think about it? How do you feel? <laughs> How do you feel about do cool things and win? Are we down? Opponent says whatever it is, I'm sure it loses to Tron, and uh, they're probably not incorrect. I think all my decks lose to Tron technically. Misty Rainforest, crack Misty Rainforest, Forest, and the noblest of hierarchs. We're still one mana short of storming the festival. Our opponent Tron kept seven and they're on the play, which is not ideal. We would much rather us be on the play. I mean, play to fairy, but it doesn't really do anything. I think we just play a forest. I mean, we just got to hope, hope and pray to the magic God Sanctum Weaver. Get in with the hierarch. All right, no, no Rast, no Ammies. Come on, opponent. No Karns, no nothing, no nothing. No missing Tron piece, although, ooh, wow, they don't have the miss. They kept a seven without Tron. Life is better. Are they dismembering? Okay, they're dismembering. Life is way better than it was because they don't have Tron yet. We draw a Ley Line of the Guild Pact. I mean, we get to Storm, right? So play the land. One, two, make green. Noble Hierarch, Storm the Festival. Do we want the Teferi? Teferi does draw us a card. Sanctum Weaver. Take up Teferi, pass the turn. Okay, Oblivion Stone. That's a future problem, but we're okay for now and we can even bounce it. Birds of Paradise. Bouncy Oblivion Stone. Draw another Sanctum Weaver. Oh, what if they draw Tron? If they draw Tron, we're just done, right? Because they can crack that right away. So we need to win next turn. How do we most guarantee winning next turn? Let's play Sanctum Weaver. This just isn't enough mana, right? If we nick those, we nick those to eight, nine. Yeah, we're one short. Well, I mean, I guess we just play the Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn and pray to the magic gods. Hold. Opponent, Karn the Great Creator, okay. But that doesn't beat us. Opponent gonna tutor with Karn. I mean, now we have an absurd amount of mana, but they can potentially get Tormod's Crypt, yep, to get rid of the Storm the Festival. All right, so we got a lot of mana, but nothing to do with it. Tron doing Tron things. Hollowed Fountain, not good. Well, we tick up. We can only hit the Karn for one, so it's gonna be able to tutor something. Ugh. Well, hit the Karn for one. 
I kind of hate Karn. Down to two. Hollowed Fountain tapped. And we're not going to play anything. We're just going to pass. We're kind of hoping they go for like a one ring. We just need more time. We're like so close and yet so far. Eventually they're going to draw Tron. And once they draw Tron, we're very out of luck. We really need that Storm of the Festival. We were one mana short from flashing it back. Now we have almost unlimited mana. Just nothing to really do with it. We are going to see three cards at least, right? We can draw two with Teferi. Maybe we should have just ran out the other lane line of the Guild Pact. So the problem is we know about the Oblivion Stone. If they get Pithy Needle on Teferi, that does shut us off of drawing cards. And we kind of need to draw a finisher here. Oh, all right. Well, there goes our card draw. Pithy Needle on Teferi. That also shuts down the card in our hand. And there's the Oblivion Stone. We draw a Misty Rainforest that does nothing. We have infinite mana that does nothing. Hit you with the Birds of Paradise. Well, now our opponent's a land away from winning. Once they Wrath, we scoop. We just can't. There's no realistic way of rebuilding once they Wrath. All right, bone it. Yeah, Pithy Needle in the main deck, pretty annoying. Well, it looks like we get another turn. Crack the Misty. Does this say non-lands? I mean, I think we take the Dryad Arbor. Oh, hierarch. Oh, this is the biggest amount of mana going to waste. Dryad Arbor. Hit you for two. Pass the turn. Pwn it. Yeah, counter on the needle. Do they draw the land? Relic of Progenitus. So that's a redraw. We might get one more turn. Windswept Teeth. Ah, hit you for two. Two. <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The slappiest of slap fights. About it. Chromatic Sphere. Cracks it. Do they draw the land? Yes. All right. GG's. Uh, Tron. Actually, that was mostly Karn. When you think about it, that was like 99% Karn. 99% Karn and like... That was really it. That tutoring, the Karn got to tutor out all the pieces. We didn't get to flashback or storm the festival. Thankfully, our opponent didn't hit Tron very quickly or we would have been dead way earlier. We just, after the Karn, ah, oh, Our opponent played it well, right? They tutored up the Tormod script to deal with the graveyard. Then they tutored up the Bithy Needle to deal with Teferi. That's kind of the example of why I really hate Karn. <laughs> it's everything. everything. It's like a wild card. It's literally the best card in your deck at any time, which I don't know if that's very good card design. I know people be like, oh, there's a cost. I have to like put cards in my sideboard. <laughs> I remember Watsy staff making that argument about companions. I mean, I don't know if companions will barely be worth it. <clears throat> oh, it's like playing 14 cards in your sideboard. <laughs> it costs you a sideboard slot to play that Luris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> that makes it fair. There's a cost. Uh, I mean, Karn obviously has more of a cost than a companion. We got some ley lines. We got a Bird's Paradise. We got a Nykthos. I think this is, if nothing goes wrong, which it definitely can go wrong, I think we get to just turn to a Storm the Festival. What goes wrong is a Dryad Arbor dying. Oh... Wow. Wait, are we gonna lose because we had a Dryad Arbor? Probably. Oh, gee. <laughs> Dryad Arbor! The curse of the Dryad Arbor. Oh, uh, and now we can't play anything. And now we can't play anything because that was our only greed source. Oh, Dryad Arbor. I still feel like Dryad Arbor is worth it. I still do. Oh, jeez. I mean, we're literally getting max Dryad Arbor punished. As punished as you can possibly be by Dryad Arbor is what we are getting right now. I still think as a one of, I still think it's worth it. Because it's like a combo piece that you can fetch out on your opponent's end step. It's got to be. If I mean, if Dryad Arbor is not worth it as a one of in this deck, it's just not worth it anywhere at any time. Well, as it is, though, this is unfortunate. And there's Tron and Oblivion Stone, and GG's. I don't know if this video is for against the odds, but I think this deck is against the odds, that's for sure. When it works though, it's so sweet. We gotta keep it. We get both ley lines, one land and a Birds of Paradise. We have the Storm of the Festivals. We just need enough mana to actually cast it. Hedron Crab, all right, looks like we're getting milled. Opponent passes. Oh, we're like literally a land away from going infinite. 
go. We need, we need a land. We need a land. We need a land and we got the turn two infinite. Bonig and a mill is a bunch. Mills. Emrakul. Hello. <laughs> ah, no. They had surgical in hand. No. Mills and extracts. And Craig's Blue Delta. Wait. This is milling in response to the Emrakul trigger. That doesn't make sense, but thank you. We're still going to get the shuffle. Oh, I see. They're being sneaky. Lands and mana dorks, please. Pwn it. Passes. Well, that's a land. This might be Dryad Harper's time. This might be Dryad Harper's time. This might be it. Oh, no, they have a field of ruin. Okay, less likely to be it. Unless they fire it off. Jace perfected mind. All right. I mean, we got to do it. We got to do it. Crack this. Oh, they, they mailed the Dryad Arbor. Wow, we have no luck this match. All right, well, that's worse, okay. That's a good draw, though. That's a very good draw. We draw the Nykthos. We can make six. Storm the Festival. Get a Kenrith land. And then Trample and Haste the Kenrith. Smack the Jace. Pass the turn. Do you keep the crab? They're gonna keep the crab. The Jace is gonna go to one. But we get to storm the festival again next turn. Oh, we're actually close to winning now. Oh, that was going to be Dryad's Arbor's time to be the hero. They can feel the ruin the Nick though, which I guess does slow us down quite a bit. Okay, they drown in the lock the Kenrith and takes up the Jace. We draw a forest. Uh, play the forest. One, two. Nykthos. Add green. Storm the festival. So if we go Leyline to the Guild Pack Nykthos, we can spin again. Or we take Noble High Arc to Fairy and try to set up to combo next turn. How are we going to win, though? We have no Emrakul and we have no Kenrith. So we have to win with the Leyline. Yeah, let's go Leyline Nykthos. Keep the new Nykthos. Make green. Spin again. To Fairy. Sanctum Weaver. Take up to Fairy. Pass the turn. Once again, lethal has been presented. And our opponent's not going to interact during our turn. Wow. All right, opponent's going to mill. Oh, they mill at Storm the Festival. Thank you. The question is, can we Pact of Negation? They're going to blow up the Nykthos. Okay. Sure. Get a forest. Oh, now we got to think. One, two, three, four. I think we Pact of Negation. We need a land to win so we can pay for the pact. Actually, no, we're good. We just win, right? So we pay for the pact. We draw a line. Yeah, that taps for enough. Okay, freed from the real. And that should do it. Oh, untap. Tap. Untap. I'm just going to tell our opponent. They can, uh, they can scoop it if they want or sit through it. Doesn't really matter. And opponent scoops it up and pony had a lot of interaction but we managed to survive the milling what do we want against mill mill is like one of the hottest decks in modern right now which is weird who would have thought in 2024 mill would suddenly be one of the hottest decks in the format who had mill becomes competitive on their <laughs> their modern bingo guard man they even answered the emerald too i mean our having an emerald is great that's like the single best thing that we can have in our deck is an Eldrazi that is an upside to this deck. Natural mill hate in the main. Like Leyline of Sanctity, maybe we don't really sideboard much. Veil of Summer seems good. What do we need to be afraid of in, in mill and modern? So you got the crabs, surgicals, extirpates, blah, blah, blah. The weird thing is, so archive trap targets, but like fractured sanity doesn't target. Uh, Glimpse of the unthinkable tar, hmm. This is a weird build of mill. Maybe Ley Line's better than I thought. Normally you have yet. I think Tasha's Hideous Laughter is more common. And that doesn't target. Yeah, we might just not change hardly anything. Maybe like a Surge of Salvation, just to have a little bit more removal. Or a little more protection from removal. You know what? Let's just run it back. Let's just run it back. No changes. It is awkward that we cannot kill a crab. Leyline, a bunch of freed from the reels. No mana dork. Let's mulligan. This hand's pretty good. We're gonna put this Dryad Arbor to the bottom super quick here. <laughs> we don't talk about that Dryad Arbor. <laughs> Dryad Arbor is the funniest land. You almost never wanna draw it. Ruin crab. You almost never wanna draw it, but there are scenarios where uh, it's really good. Wow. If our opponent cannot interact here, we could just go off. Okay, they can interact here. So I guess we won't just go off. 
Lottery Grave, mills us. Emrakul, no. I mean, we get to try again. We have the Sanctum Weaver. And another Ley Line, well, untap land. And Sanctum Weaver, go. If you can't interact, <laughs> we can go off, so don't kill it, please. Does Sanctum Weaver not have a mouth? Look at that face. I do not see a mouth. What happened to Sanctum Weaver's mouth? That's <laughs> that's the real question. <laughs> why, why is there no mouth on Sanctum Weaver? Well, now the question is, do we even go for it? What are the odds of it working if we spend our freed from the real? Opponent passes. We draw to Teferi? Okay, okay. It's not gonna work, is it? It's not gonna work. We're gonna play Teferi. The other upside of Teferi means if our opponent mills Emrakul, they can't surgical it in response. Wow, resolves. Bounce your crabs. Opponent gonna crack the fetch, mill us. Yeah, Teferi actually seems really good in this matchup. All right, no Emrakul, bounce the crab. Draw Nykthos. Eh, not enough mana to do anything, all right. Well, uh, pass the turn and now we have a Teferi. Our opponent needs to kill the Sanctum Weaver during their turn or somehow mill 41 cards through an Emrakul and a Teferi or we're gonna win next turn, most likely. Actually, definitely. Assassin's Trophy? Oh, all right. Assassin's Trophy is the Sanctum Weaver. We will grab Island. Actually, let's grab a forest. Grab a forest. More crabs. And a fetch. And a mill. And a fetch. Please just hit the Emrakul. Hit the Emrakul real quick. Hit the Emrakul real quick. <sighs> Still no Emrakul, okay, and? Pick your poison to get rid of our ley line. Opponent is down to two cards though, that's something. Replay the ley line. Take up to fairy, pass the turn. Well, now we need at least two turns to win, most likely. Opponent, Etwara, mills us. Emrakul, shuffle him back in. To fairy on the battlefield, cannot cast a spell in response. It is not as a sorcery. Opponent had a had an ancestral in hand, ruined by the Emrakuling. All right, sure. <laughs> Wait, was that for four? It was only for four, but they got our Emrakul, which is kind of huge. <laughs> the worst slash best Tasso City is laughter of all time. <laughs> so bad and actually pretty effective. Uh, well, take up the Teferi, play the Birds of Paradise, play the Windswept Teeth. I mean, odds of us going off next turn, pretty high now. We do need the birds to live. Shaldock Isle, mills us. All right, Drowsy is gone, so mill, oh, there was our finale of devastation. We still have the Kenrith, we still have the Kenrith. Pownet gonna hide away something. Don't kill the birds. No, no, no. You can mill us, that's okay, I think. Jace the Perfected Mind, okay. And Mills and Draws, trying to find an answer to the birds, did they? No, pick your poison, did you really? Wow, opponent keeps hitting it. Well, we will crack a Windswept Teeth. We'll get the Dryad Arbor. We draw a Hierarch. So this taps for two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Take up to Fairy. And I think we just cast it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Storm the Festival. Sanctum Weaver. Kenrith. Pass the turn. I mean, opponent needs something miraculous to happen here. I think we might be getting their opponent. It's just a fetch. It's just a fetch. Mills us. Sure. But we have the freed from the real in hand. So we are about to do things. Opponent passes. Tap this for blue, freed from the real. Do the thing, untap it. And we got the GG's. Really cool opponent. Opponent, uh, they've watched some videos before and they were like, I'll sit here and let you click through it if you want or else I'll scoop. Uh, so it was very cool of them to give the option. But uh, but yes, we don't really need to click through all of it. We've seen it before, we know how it works. That's a pretty funny matchup, I feel like, <laughs> Mill might be a good matchup. They do have a decent amount of removal. And we even saw it in that game where they had the Fatal Push, Assassin's Trophy, Double Pick Your Poison. But in the end, we were able to just kind of slog through. And the Emrakul was huge. Just being able to uh, to stop the to stop uh, our opponent from directly milling us out. Even with that one shuffle before it got exiled, even that's a pretty big deal. Like, that just undoes like two of our opponent's cards or something. And then it actually kind of ate Atasha's Hideous Laughter. I've never seen Hideous Laughter for four before. I'm pretty sure that's the worst Hideous Laughter I've ever seen, but yeah, sweet.
So what do we learn this week about Bant ley lines freed from the real combo in Modern? And overall, you're seeing bits of two different leagues here. So I did a league, I went two and three, did another league, and I'm currently one and one in that league. So our win rate, a little bit under 50%. In this deck, I guess that makes sense. We got to see, like this deck be incredibly explosive. We literally had turn two kills with it. And it's very much like a mulligan simulator removal check deck. We get a mulligan aggressively to find our pieces. Then we do our thing and we just like cross our fingers and pray to the magic gods that our opponent can't kill our mana dork. When it all goes right, our reward is a ridiculously spectacular infinite mana, infinite everything combo turn, maybe literally on turn two. When it goes wrong, it's pretty bad. Bad. We played some matchups where opponents just like kill your mana dork and then kill your mana dork and then thought seize your freed from the real and then kill your mana dork and we kind of just do nothing all game. So it's a very like high risk, high reward deck. When it all comes together, the deck is like ridiculously explosive and fast. The bad games, they're pretty bad though. So would I recommend playing this deck? <sighs> It's really tough. I feel like this is a deck that's at its best when people don't know about it. Like once opponents know, oh, all I gotta do is kill the mana dork. Uh, and they expect once they see like these weird ley lines entering the battlefield that, oh no, I could die on turn two. I feel like it's gonna get a lot harder to win with, which is a little bit of a problem considering we were already a bit below 50% with it with people not knowing about the deck. So that is a bit of a concern. I feel like this is a deck where if you hit the right matchups and run well, you could easily like 5-0 a league or win your FNM or whatever. On the other hand, there will be times when you jump into a league or go to FNM and you end up going like 0-5 because you hit the bad matchups, you mulligan down to four a bunch of times, don't find the combo pieces. So that's just how this deck is gonna be. But it's really wonky, it's really unique. Freed from the real is really sweet. So if you're looking for something different to do and just wanna play some like high risk, high reward, ridiculous magic, the deck's pretty fun. So anyway, that's Vant Leyline Freed from the Real Combo. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.